Hey guys and welcome to Slash Rex Games. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can take any existing top-down game that you have or any top-down game that you wish to create and add an extra element of immersion for your players and what I'm talking about here is shell casing ejection. So when we shoot, notice there we go, we've got a shell flying out there. It looks really cool, we move around, there it goes, pretty cool, huh? So basically what happens to these shells is they are ejected whenever a bullet is created and they gradually increase in size to simulate... Um, they're moving closer to the camera then after a second or less than a second they start falling down as if affected by gravity check that out, pretty cool huh? and then if we keep shooting you can notice there's quite a, a random pattern see they, they land in different places each time so that's pretty awesome and they also spin around which is fun so there we go and we've got reloading all the other dynamics of pretty much any other top-down shooter that I have on show here is in this tutorial so there we go, shooting, rejecting, shell casing. Notice that a fresh shell is a lot brighter than a shell that has been lying on the ground. That is because what I'm doing is I'm giving these shells a lifespan. As soon as they are created, they are starting to deteriorate until they are invisible, in which case they will be deleted as not to remain in memory for longer than they should. So that's pretty awesome. So let's jump straight into the code, and I can show you how you can go about doing this. So before we start adding all kinds of wonderful things, I'd like to first introduce you to the project onto which we will be building upon. So here we've got a sprite player, sprite bullet, pretty standard stuff. Background floor, there we go, that's going to be our background. In our object player, in our create, we've got some variable declarations. We've got can shoot equals true, left equals true. Most of these things you'll recognize from some of my other shooting tutorials um, because our character has two guns, one in each hand, we're going to be shooting one from the left and then the right, left, right, it's going to be alternating, etc. So here we are saying first shoot from the left one, our reload speed is 4, as in 4 seconds, is reloading equals false, because when we start the game obviously we're not reloading, rate of fire is 0.2, shots fired has been given a value of 0 for start, clip size is going to be <laughs> not 100, let's make it 30, uh, ammo 900, let's make it 1000 basically, I want this we want to be able to shoot without having to worry about we're running out of ammo for now. Here's our X and Y offsets for each gun. So basically, this here, then X1 means of the first gun, which is the left one, the X coordinate of the barrel is 83 pixels away from the origin. So in this case, the origin of X is 40. So that means from here to here, which is approximately the X coordinate of the barrel, is 83 pixels. Then here on the Y coordinates we've got minus 34. Minus means up. Y is up and down. So from the origin 40, if we minus 34, so we're going up, 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 minus th by 34, we're going to be around here. That is where the Y coordinate of the barrel is. So with Y equals over here and X over there, which means it puts us right there on the spot at the end where we need it to be. And it's just the, the opposite mirrored version for the right gun. So now that that's sorted, let's jump over into the draw event, basically when is reloading equals true. It's just going to show us in red that we are reloading now. Moving along to our step, it's pretty basic stuff here. It's just some uh, some basic movement. We've also got down here the rotation speed. We want a smooth rotation uh, towards the mouse at all times. In our global left button, what I've done is you might notice that it's slightly different to some of my other tutorials on shooting. What I've done is try to simplify things and group them together, especially now that there are two guns, left and right. So first we check if we have ammo, if we can shoot and we are not reloading. If we are allowed to shoot based upon those constraints, we're going to decrease ammo by one. We're going to create a temporary variable called bullet ID, which we will later store the instance of the bullet we created into there. We are determining if it's left or right to be shot from. Then we are creating two variables, bullet X and bullet Y, into where we store the exact location where this bullet needs to be created, irrespective of the player's image angle. So no matter which direction he's facing, we want to grab that exact position that we want to shoot from. And it's just the opposite for the right gun. In this case, we're using Len X2 and Len Y2 instead of Len X1 and Len Y1. Moving down, here we can see we are creating that bullet and placing it in this variable for later use, as in over here, when we're setting its direction to the image angle of the player, we're setting the bullet's image angle to its direction, and then we're giving it a speed so it can start traveling. We're increasing shots fired by one. Can shoot is now false. We don't want the player to be able to shoot another bullet until we have waited the required amount of time, depending on whether it is a reload, in this case, or just one less shot in the clip. So if it is a reload, shots fired are now zero. If we've got ammo still, 
Then we're going to wait the required amount of time for a reload as we call alarm zero to reset all our variables that are to do with shooting. And we are now reloading, so display that message. If it's just one less shot in the clip, we're just going to wait the required amount of time between each bullet by calling alarm one to reset all those variables when we need to. So there we go, we're going to check out alarm zero and one. Going into alarm zero, this is reloading. So at this point in time, after we have gone through the required amount of time, can shoot equals true, is reloading equals false, and we continue shooting or whatever. Alarm 1, can shoot equals now true, if it was left, now shoot from the right, otherwise shoot from the left. Okay, so that pretty much wraps up those. Notice object bullet has no code in it whatsoever, so we don't have to worry about that. So let's go ahead and start adding things so that we can make this game even better. So we're going to our object player. Firstly, we're creating the bullets at the tip here right there at the barrels. Now when it comes to the shell casings, I'm going to create them just slightly lower of the player's hand, so around there and then here off the sprite over there, and they're going to be ejected over the right hand shoulder as we saw in the demo. So we need to work out the difference between 40-40 and this position over here and this position over here. Now beforehand I've worked out those calculations I'm going to be creating two variables uh, for each gun so here we've got shell x1 and shell y1, shell x2 and shell y2. So just as we've done with the bullets, we have the offsets for the actual shells. And I calculated them earlier to be 64 minus 28, 64 again, and 38. That's going to place these shells exactly where we need them to be. Okay, so let's keep moving. The only other place we need to actually do stuff is in this global left button. So whenever we're creating a bullet, we also want it to create a shell casing. So here we've got this piece of code, which is pretty much the same as this one, save for these variable differences. And we're going to be doing the exact same thing to grab the location for that shell. So I'm going to paste it in here. we cut some indentation. We're going to call this shell X and shell Y. And then obviously these change to shell instead of len. It's a very, very simple changeover. When you are copy-pasting, do beware. All kinds of things can go wrong when you copy-paste a piece of code. So let's move down here and copy this and paste it exactly the same way. You know what, actually we can just copy-paste this and then just change all those ones to twos. Here we go. Two, 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 two. So at this point in time, we've grabbed those X and Y coordinates are where we need to create this shell. So now we're going to go down here to the bullet create and simply say instance create at shell X and shell Y. We're going to create an instance of object bullet casing. I would say shell casing. Okay, so there we go. We haven't created this uh, object prototype yet, so it's grayed out. So I'm going to copy that. Nothing else has to change. We're going to say OK. OK. Create an object. Call it that. Object shell casing. Give it a sprite. We need to actually bring in a sprite here. Let's create one. Load in a sprite. I've got this sprite casing. It's just a little one I made earlier. It's nothing fancy. You can check it out. Hey, Pretty simple. OK. OK. Sprite shell casing. Center that. Say OK. Set it up. Bam, bam, it is all good. So now this is where the fun happens. So we're going to create some variables right over here. Quite a few, actually. And then in the step events, we are going to use them. Okay, so we need a few things. Basically, we need to randomize uh, the current seed because we need to be using random functions. We want the shells to do all kinds of random things. We're going to have a variable called spin, which is going to be a random range. So that's includes decimals uh, from minus 8 to 8 okay then we're going to set up a direction uh, for this instance and it's basically going to be the object player's image angle plus 200 to get it on his right shoulder but now we also want it to be slightly random so we're also going to give it a random range of between minus 20 and 20 and because we want these shells to not take up a lot of memory, uh, we actually want them to destroy themselves 
and to do that we're going to give them a life cycle so they can start off strong and then deteriorate as the game progresses eventually they're going to disappear and it's going to be very subtle we don't want the slight optimization to take away from the immersion that the player is experiencing so it's going to be very subtle they're going to slowly fade and then destroy themselves so that they take up less memory so we're going to give it an image alpha of one on start we're going to have something called scale and it's going to be set to 0 0.6 on start and create here we can have min scale which is going to be 0 0.5 so basically when it's busy shrinking as to simulate gravity and it's getting further away from the camera it's going to get to 0.5 and that's going to be a rest position as if it's on the ground not moving anymore our max scale is going to be set to 1.3 this is when the bullet is ejected is moving towards the camera so it's getting slightly bigger it's going to reach a pinnacle where it's no longer growing then from that point in time gravity is winning it is getting smaller and further away from the camera until it gets to 0.5 where it it is in the rest position. Each shell is going to have a different speed. Uh, it's not going to be too crazy. Uh, I'm going to say 10 and 14. Very subtle difference between those, so you won't really notice it, but it'll make it appear more random. Then we're going to have a fade rate. This is the rate in which the bullet deteriorates. Uh, it's going to be 0.01. That's pretty good. Uh, state. I'm just using a string here to switch on later. This is what it's doing. So is it going up? Is it going, coming down? Is it resting? You know, that sort of thing. This is going to be helping us handle how we're scaling. Okay, so let's go add event, step, drag in some code. So I'm going to take advantage of a switch statement over here. I'm going to switch on state. There we go. First, we're going to start with case equals up. set this up there we go and when we are ejecting the shell it's getting closer to the camera so if scale is less than max scale that means we are still increasing its scale so scale plus equals 0.2 I'm gonna say that else it means we've now reached the point where we no longer want to scale it up so state equals down and irrespective of what happens we're going to want us to increase the angle by that of spin so we got that like spinning effect it looks kind of out of control now we're going to move along to case down and I'll break so we don't forget if scale is greater than min scale then what we want is the scale to decrease by 0 0.04 here we can say else so this is the point in time where state changes to rest if it has reached the minimum scale as to simulate it's touching the ground again irrespective we are going to be spinning that Showcasing. Give it some space. Okay. So now we've got to do the case for rest. Just like that. And when it's resting, basically we just want speed to equal zero. And then because there is no image angle plus equals spin in here, whenever it's resting it'll not rotate anymore. Okay, so then close off that switch. We're going to be handling the scale here to set the depth because we want to to simulate that if it's at a certain scale it means it's sort of below our player so if we have to move over that shell while it's still falling it's going to be under us. So if scale is greater than 0 0.7 then our depth is going to be above our player so depth equals minus 1. Otherwise depth is going to be equal to 1 which means we're going to be above it because the player is 0 which is greater depth than 1. Then we're going to obviously set our image x scale and our image y scale to that of scale. There we go. These scale variables will now be shoved into the x and y scales right over there to constrain proportions. We're going to set our image alpha to that of, well, it's actually decreased by fade rate. And then lastly, if image alpha is less than or equal to zero, we want it to self-destruct.
instance destroy. Okay, so that's it actually. We set up some variables. If the shell casing is moving up towards the camera, then we are increasing its scale. Otherwise, it changes state to down, irrespective it's going to be spinning. If it's down, if it's greater than the rest scale, then we're going to be decreasing it. It's going to be getting smaller and smaller to simulate it, get it getting further away from the camera. Otherwise, it's going to be a rest. And when it's rest, its speed is zero, therefore it's not moving. And then here we're just making sure that the depth at any point in time can be checked out so that the bullet uh, casing is either below us or above us. We're constraining the proportions of the X and Y scale and we are setting out and we are sorting out the life cycle right over here and telling it when to destroy itself. So that about wraps up all the code we need. We can just click OK and we can test this out and you'll see that it'll actually look pretty cool. So here we go. There we have it. We're shooting. The bullets are increasing in size slowly and then they are decreasing and they're falling quite far behind our player. We've also got reloading, so that's pretty cool. Notice the random scattering pattern that the shells land in, which is pretty awesome. Yeah, so I'd say very, very successful effect. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and found it both educational and helpful. Please feel free to comment, rate, and subscribe for more of the very best game makes tutorials. If you really like this tutorial as well as many of the other ones, then you can become an official sponsor of my work. You can just check out the Patreon campaign in the banner as well as in the description below. Also, you can find the project for this in the description below. Uh, fill around with it, optimize it, see what all kinds of things you can do, and try and implement this into your own game and let me know how that goes. You can also follow me on various social media networks such as Twitter and Google Plus and Facebook if you want. Links are in the description. Coming up next time, now this is very exciting, what I'm going to be doing is building upon this tutorial even more. Basically what I'm going to be doing is manipulating time again. Yes, what we're going to be doing is slowing down time somewhat similar to the Matrix. I know, right? It's going to be really fantastic and I'm going to be basing it right off the tutorial so when we shoot these shell casings are going to be moving super slow-mo, the reloading is going to be slow, the timing between shots is going to be slow and the bullets are going to be flying slow so it's completely customizable which makes it fantastic. So until that comes out, happy coding, fiddle around and I guess I'll see you guys then.